Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, your painterly dreamscape wanderer, and this is the first episode of Xenoclash. So I'm going to be running through this game over the next couple weeks. It's a very short game, it's about four hours long, I think, if you run through it in one sitting. And um, it's very interesting. I've been intending to let's play it for a really long time, but I've never had quite the right circumstances, and hey, those circumstances have occurred. So essentially, uh, I've just moved into a new flat due to being evicted from my old flat, as you may or may not remember. Uh, or no. So, because of that, I am actually using a temporary recording setup right now, which means my audio quality isn't great. That's one of the reasons I'm doing this instead of jumping straight into the transistor let's play and, um, uh, well, after finishing the Mirror's Edge let's play. Uh, essentially, I need to get set up in my new place, I need to figure out a way to have decent audio quality, um, and I need to figure out any teething troubles, that kind of thing. But I really don't want my hiatus to last any longer than it has had to already, so I'm starting with this for a couple of weeks to tide me over while I get everything else sorted out. Um, and then I will be releasing the final episode of Mirror's Edge and starting the Transistor Let's Play. So, all of that out of the way, let's start the game proper. Um, I won't be talking very much early on because there's a cutscene and then there's a tutorial section, and I don't like to talk over NPC dialogue, even if all they're doing is telling you to punch them in the face. So I won't have many opportunities to get a word in edgewise until we actually get going. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah, this tutorial takes place in your mind in a dreamscape that may or may not be related into some spiritual way to real events. Uh, and this is your mentor, Metamok. We'll learn more about him later on, but for now he's just kind of a large rectangular mentor figure. So, he wants us to kick birds. I guess twice. Oops. Two birds, but not three. Now you will fight me. But those kicks won't help you much. To fight a real opponent, you have to focus on him. That's it. Now all your attacks and your movement are focused on me. Now hit me. Good. When 
enemy attack you, you must be quick to decide on who you will focus on. Now focus on the other fighter. Good enough. Now fight him only. <laughs> Gat, I don't know why you did it. Father, mother's children are already coming. Are you listening? Gat! If you stay with me, they might hunt you down too. I know. There he is! <coughs> we'll eat your butt on death and your skull! Death. Try to resist, Gat! I'll try to open the gate! So this is the first proper fight of the You're game. No brother of mine, Gat! <coughs> you killed father, mother, you worthless cack! He introduces everyone's favorite side character, Remart. Here is this woman in the amazing hat. I'll kill you! <coughs> so, this game is in the Source engine for reasons which I will talk about later, which are interesting. <coughs> Uh, but it does mean that it has some very strange weirdnesses, to say the least. The main thing, though, is to avoid getting the shit kicked out of you by assorted pigmen, birdmen, weird, weird individuals of all sorts. It's not that difficult if you're focusing, however, I'm uh, <laughs> trying to talk at the same time. Fortunately, there are a few uh, healing items scattered around in almost every combat arena, which you can top off your health with. If uh, pigmen who are significantly worse at fighting than you manage to uh, get a couple hits in edgewise. Or this bird guy, I guess. So I think these two are much easier to sort of divide and conquer. Because uh, Remount's really the strongest fighter in their sort of group. Or at least the strongest fighter other than you, because these are your former siblings. Or at least they're your current siblings too, sort of. Oh, fantastic. I, <laughs> I absolutely basketball hooped him. Nice. Excellent. So, uh, Gastonis and uh, Unpa aren't very, aren't very good fighters. We'll be fighting them a lot over the course of the game. So, I'll talk about why it's in this. That really knocks him out in one hit, huh? I, w I assume the game has a sort of a. I think he had health bar left, so. I assume there's a built in um, thing where if they're immobilized by scenery, they, they count as being uh, being defeated for the purposes now of the get, game. Can you get through now? I don't know, can I? Are you through? Be 
pick up the whipper. Good. Now test your whipper. Shoot with it. Now reload your whipper. Good. Now we play a little game. You will shoot these birds after I throw them. But you shoot before they stop moving. Oh, go on, just be luck. Shoot again. As is traditional in video games, he makes it do makes you do it three times. So even though this is a first person brawler rather than shooter, you do get to use weapons at certain points. Uh, often to assist you during uh, wider combat. <laughs> But sometimes it's a matter of necessity. Now focus on the other fighter. Uh, what? Oh, there he is. <laughs> Throwing guns at people is always kind of hilarious. Are you okay? You were gone for a minute. I know you're tired, but they're bringing bugbirds to follow you. You have to get a gun before they get here. So, uh, yeah. Which is a phrase I say a lot in this. Uh, somewhere around here there's supposed to be a grenade launcher, but I can never find it. I think it might only spawn in with the uh, group who follows me. Which is uh, Remart and a couple more of your various siblings, because you do have a very big family. These guns are actually called the Fish Pistols, which I love because everything in this game is remarkably strange and very odd. It's uh, It has a wide variety of painterly inspirations. It's almost like playing a painting, in fact. The visual style um, is strongly reflective of um, some surrealist styles, but also some uh, more literal fantastical painters. In fact, the uh, the game's designers have in uh, many interviews referred to the specific influences Gat! on this game. Hey, Gat, over here! I mean, obviously, we can jump right in and point out that the architecture of this city, Hastum, is often influenced by uh, Anthony Gaudi, which... Am I getting typecast as someone who plays games with architecture influenced by Gaudi? Because that's... Oh no. Diadra. This is a disaster. This is a, this is a diastra. So yeah, a father mother's brood can be kind of ruthless, I guess. This is Gastornis again, but instead of Onpo we're introduced to another sibling. Who I cannot help but think of. Ah yeah, so she does have the grenade launcher. Which means it's very important to get her down ASAP. So, much like you, everybody else can also pick up weapons at almost any time if it's lying on the ground. This means that in combat encounters that have weapons, you need to be careful to manage the ones that you don't want your opponents to have. Fortunately, you can always knock uh, a gun out of someone's hands with a single hit, and they can do the same to you, as a matter of fact. There's actually a few combat techniques that um, I'm using here, which haven't been taught to us in the tutorial sections yet, that's because I've played this game a lot over the years. Anyway. Is that Ketsy or Sexy? Uh, I suppose it matters, but he kind of just always seemed to me like like a slightly rubbish version of Gat. Gat being the main character that we're playing as. That heavy punch is the like super heavy punch and it's extremely useful. 
But um, Metamorph only teaches us these advanced techniques later on. Also notice that bumping someone into someone else knocks them both over. You're not going to do jack shit. You're me, but rubbish. I do want to also point out that look how incredibly detailed and unique all of these character models are. They all have these odd little these odd little details. Not just the strange animal men, but the more humanoid ones wearing clothes have weird clothes and interesting little details, such as Remart's curious pairing of a stiletto boot and some kind of a wader boot. It's funny you decided to follow me, Deidre, because I wasn't going anywhere. So you were going to wait here? Till your million brothers and sisters got here and killed you? Get up, you Tef. We'll go into the beach or the woods, where we can hide. Away from Halston. I'm glad you came, Deidre. Seems now it's my turn to follow you. Do you think your family will come after us? I'm sure of it. It's what I would do. There's a lot of interesting detail in this world. As I was saying, it's very painterly and it's... Uh, huh, I never noticed that before. I've actually never played this game on high resolution because I didn't realize that it had a, an aspect ratio window, a uh, drop down box that you could alter that would give you different options for resolutions. So I've mostly played this game on about half the resolution one would normally pl ideally play it on, which means I've never seen this in detail. I didn't know this uh, crossbow shoots little heads. I thought it just fired weird blurry rocks. Um, so I might notice some of the details as we go along. I also like Diadra's design a lot. Their visual designs don't really reflect who they are as people in terms of their details. Um, which is something that's interesting considering that the design team has explicitly said they all of the characters were designed first and um, they had sort of a design parameter thing where they would come up with visual designs first and then they would come up with a personality that fit those visual designs and then they would come up with mechanics that fit that personality so a character who is heavy and clumpy looking might be um, you know, slow and unwise, uh, but then also quite defensive in combat. Or any other, you know, extremely obvious decisions. Not that I'm saying that this game isn't obvious in its decisions, because it's really not, for the most part. But, you know, that's an example of what I'm talking about. This chapter is almost entirely just running and gunning down this uh, path, so hopefully I'll have a fair few opportunities to ramble quietly about the game. A lot of the sound design in this game is very strange, um, which is interesting. Uh, in an interview, the developers said that they wanted uh, better voice acting for the game, but due to the rush they had to finalise it and get it released on time, they uh, had to go with lower quality voice acting. I personally don't think it's low quality voice acting, because the strange, halting, stilted way these people talk is very reflective of this sort of... There's almost a sort of a primordial naivete to a lot of the characters and to a lot of the world. Which will be delved into more as we go along. But... Given all of that... They, um... They just kind of... Have this broken, stilted, halting English. Which really enhances the strangely dreamlike sense of this place. This, this odd, sleepy realm, this kind of... It, I, think it, I think dreamlike is the best word for it. And it is interesting that, as I mentioned before, their painterly inspirations are a matter of public record because they've talked about it in interviews. But the painters that they talk about primarily are not, for example, surrealists, like you might think. Um, one of the main inspirations that they talk about is uh, actually Jean Blanche, who's absolutely not a surrealist. He's a uh, fantastical painter who is... Uh, oh, I have ammunition. That's weird. Why did I have to reload twice? Uh, as a little mechanical side note, Deidre, as far as I can tell, she's actually um, invulnerable. She can get knocked down, but she can't get killed, which means that she comes in very handy as a tank, which is 
kind of not how you're supposed to be, you know, um, playing the game. But you can't fight rough birds with your hands very easily, so since they will go for her and they can't kill her, why not um, let her get knocked down? Is that one dead? What a waste of that yeah. Do we at least have enough time to boil one? So, um, they've claimed they they've mentioned an inspiration in John Blanche, although his earlier work rather than his more recent work, and that is kind of reflected in the painterly style of a lot of the the, the areas in the game. But um, I feel like the clearest inspiration is Hieronymus Bosch, specifically the Garden of Earthly Delights, which is the only, you know, painting. Uh, let's not say that. It is probably the most popular painting of his in terms of people knowing, you know, the names of paintings by famous painters. Oh, did I hit both of them with one shot? That's unusual. Um, and uh, they wanted every character in their game to be completely unique because Bosch's paintings, um, whenever he... He depicted large areas had um, a wide variety of different people. Also, this is going to be the end of this episode. Hopefully, I'll remember to talk more about this next time because I did want to delve into it in a bit more detail. But uh, this game doesn't perfectly divide up in its chapters. They're all very different lengths. Some are ten minutes long. Some are like two minutes long. So yeah, that's actually going to be all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please remember to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description. Thank you so much for watching.